Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing in the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your host, Master Captain Angie Scott. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast. Uh, we're still kind of on our Truman Lake conversation series. I hope you all really enjoyed the conversation last week between John King from the Fish Nerds podcast and Pam Martin Wells. So this week, we're going to share with you a perspective from the co-angler side with Cassie Hall and you know Cassie's someone I've been wanting to have on the podcast anyway because she's just she's one of those that when she enters a room it just you feel the energy everything lights up she's just so positive um, always cracking jokes uh, a real character a great singer too um, but she's from Alabama so she's always got to throw in a, a roll tide um, but we, we all love Cassie Hall, and so you're really going to enjoy the conversation between John and Cassie this week. Um, so again, be sure to check out the Fish Nerds podcast. Uh, they were kind enough to share this audio with our listeners because I know, you know it's right up our alley. This is what we do. We feature uh, women in the outdoors doing amazing things, and uh, this conversation is just that. Uh, Cassie gives a little background on the LBAA, and we kind of talk about what's going on with the future as well. Um, so thanks again, John. Uh, I'll put a link to the Fish Nerds podcast in the show notes so y'all can add that to your podcast listening repertoire. And uh, everyone, please enjoy. This is Crappie Hippie, your tree-hugging redneck from eastern Kansas, and I'm getting to sit down with co-angler Cassie Hall, and she is also the new member coordinator for the Lady Bass Anglers Association. Uh, Cassie, I got a lot of questions for what it's like to be a co, but first of all, explain to me kind of how you, you help these new anglers when they come into the club. Well, usually what we do is, you know, we have our meeting, and right before the meeting, the, the initial meeting, I take the new new members over to an area, and we discuss, you know, safety. We discuss sportsmanship, if anybody has any health, you know, that they would like to divulge, because that's important. Also, you know, if you're able to swim or not swim, because if you're not able to swim, then, you know, the the other angler probably needs to, to know that. If you want to share, you don't have to share any medical. You don't have to share if you can't swim or not. And what to expect, because some of these ladies have never, ever fished a tournament before. I mean, we've had a lot of new people come in and fish that have never had tournament experience. As one of them is me. I mean, I, I never had any tournament experience. I was totally green when I came in. Well, this is a wonderful place to uh, get your feet wet since we're talking about falling in the water and who can swim and all that. But <laughs> hate to use a cliche, but it really is. I get this again and again and again. The more I talk to people, the more I, I listen uh, about, you know, why. There's, there has been talk about do we even really need women in men's leagues, you know. And the consensus seems to be that, yes, we do. Because to get your feet wet, to get started... It, it's nice to have a sisterhood to uh, get that start with. It is. It is. And this sisterhood that we have here is unbelievable. I mean, we all are considered, we're family. We're all, and, and of course, you know, when a family, you're all going to have your little pet peeves and stuff or little, you know, little arguments or whatever. But when we get on the water, that's different. When you get on the water, everybody's competitive. But when we're off the water... We eat together. We have fun. I mean, it's just a, it's just a big family reunion, basically. That's what I heard. Everybody's together. Everybody's you know having fun, and this and 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 fun is is a huge part of this because uh, you know why else would it be would it be worth it? But boy, when we're out there, uh, unless you're waving the net, I think that's what Barb Harris said. Unless you're waving the net. Uh, and in need of assistance, it's on. Game on. It's game, game on. on. Game yeah, on. it's game yeah. on for sure. And and these ladies are definitely very professional in every sense of the way, and can and can catch fish. I mean, you you saw some of it today. Today at Truman Lake was really tough, 
But uh, they came in with some bags, some good bags. Some real good bags. I mean, I was reading some of the fish and game reports, and they're saying, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be another short year for the fish. going to be a lot of fish, but a lot of short fish out there. And uh, yet I saw big fish here, some nice, nice heavy bags, and uh, you guys uh, really seem to uh, take this, this humongous reservoir and be able to break it down and, and, and produce some, uh, some amazing catches. Yeah, I, t- today I fell a little short. Yesterday I had a nice 343, and today I had a .99. Lost a lot of fish, lot, and as you mentioned, a lot of short fish, lot and lot of short fish. This this fishery in about a year, I guess maybe a year or two, with all those short fish with 14 and 7 eighths and 14 and a halfs, they are going to rock it in the next year or two. They're going to be some nice fish in this in these waters here. So I hope I hope uh, find you guys back in some sort of capacity. I, I hope so. Um, Secret and Cheryl, they two amazing ladies. If it hadn't been for Secret and Cheryl, uh, the ladies here, we would have had nowhere to go and and no, nothing to fish. So as far okay. as women's well, tour, explain to my fish nerds audience. Who is Secret and Cheryl, and and what's going on there? Uh, Secret York, she's from Kentucky, and Cheryl Bowden is from Texas. And they got together and decided to start a tour for women. And uh, they did. I mean, and they both live in different states, and it it has all worked out for the last 13, 13 years, from 2010 until 2023. Those ladies have been amazing, and I can't. Thank the people, the staff. We have had so many different volunteers and the staff that we have. You know, it, it's just an amazing group of people that have made this tournament and tour possible. Well, it, it's a fantastic thing. You know, you're just talking about people being professional. It's it's such an investment, and it goes beyond the cash. I mean, it's time. It's uh yeah. You know, getting people to uh, cover your home bases while you're out out doing this. Uh, uh, Pam told me, you know, it really takes takes a tribe. It takes uh, a, a family. It takes a group of people to make it possible. Uh, so whether you're in a big, you know, association or a small one or whatever, it's a, it's a climate of professionalism because you're you're really dedicating yourself to to coming down. Yeah. And no, but no matter how you know much you're invested, the com- competition seems so very healthy. And, 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 and fun seems to be a huge slice of that pie. And that's what I really like about it. It is. And, and the ladies that fish this, we're not making a living off this. Right. We're, we're in the hole most of the time, all the time. We do this for the love of fishing. That's why we do it. It's not about the money. It's about the love of fishing. We all love to fish and hang out together, and that's what it's about. Well, if you love fishing fish tournaments, don't start a lure company because your fishing days are over. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to be a pro, this is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. Now, I want to ask you a few things about fishing as a coach. All right. Let's just, let's, let's talk about the pros and cons. Which one are you going to start with? Okay. Uh, let's start, we can start with the cons of, of yeah, let's being, get those a, cons being out a of the way. co-angler. Let, let's start that way. Uh, the cons of being a co-angler. Where to put your stuff? It, it's kind of funny. Uh, the boaters, some of them, they'll they'll kid you. They'll see you walking up with all these bags and and about eight or ten fishing rods, and they're like, "Are you moving in?" We're like, "Well, yeah, you've got a whole boat. You know, we've got to pack what we think we're going to need." And most of us travel with uh, a truck, and the in, and the back end of the truck looks like a store, so right. you can go in and shop to see what you're going to need, but it that that's that's one of the cons um the being able to to put put your stuff and then your your rods get all tangled up and but it's not too many too many cons you know it's 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 basically you know trying to handle and get your rods and everything all together okay well i i um i've listened to angie's show quite a bit and I've heard I've heard a few stories where there's you know personality clashes maybe oh yeah uh, you know this kind of thing that kind of thing. When I was a kid, guys I used to fish with, older guys used to fish with. One guy back there running the trolling motor, one guy up in the front. I used to have to sit in the middle, right? And yet it, 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 it yeah. sounds like a lot of the the pros are very generous people as far as trying to get you in a place where you know yeah. they're catching fish. They try to get an angle, 
but sometimes you ever have a pro that's just so intensely into it, all of a sudden you're swung out over 40 foot of water when you'd really like to hit that bank? Uh, well, you know, most of the ladies here are, you know, they don't front end you, uh, but... So you, you don't know, need a little pea shooter to... No, there are times, okay. though, when you're when you're getting a bite, they sure. don't know you're getting a bite, and they hit their foot on the trolling motor, and you're like, Ugh. But, oh, but, you no. know, what yeah. are you going to do? If you want to be in, in charge or in control, be a boater. That's that's the way I, you know, that's the way I look at it. Be a boater. So, yeah, they're, you, you may miss a couple bites here and there, and the next thing you know, you're in 40 feet of water, and you don't know, but most of the ladies are really good about leaving their their monitor zone so you can see exactly you know how deep or how shallow you are oh okay so they've got one the front and back arrangement for when they're running yeah you can see the running the yeah running, you can uh, see the contour lines yeah you see the sounder okay now let's go ahead and move on to the pros because i know one of the things that people talk about is wow what a thrill to get to fish with pam martin wells or oh yes Terry Sindrick or 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 well, Even it, Angie Scott, it's a thrill. And I have fished with Angie, <laughs> and and she's a lot of fun. Well, and you're luckier than me. You haven't fished with her. I have not she had needs the to take you fishing. She sure does. She needs to take you fishing because she's quite an angler. She really is. And I have learned so much. I, if you want to learn, if you want to, if you want to fish, this is my suggestion: find you a tour and go as a co angler. It is amazing what you can learn. I have learned so many different techniques. I never drop shotted in my life. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I really don't like to drop shot. But it's a slow if there's, way to fish. If there's a need to drop <laughs> shot, I will drop shots. But it, it's not my favorite thing. I have learned how to rig baits different. I have so much knowledge from each individual because you've got one girl, one lady here, that she she frog fishes. I don't care if it's raining, if the sun is high in the sky and you got bluebirds, Scott, she's going to throw that frog and she's good at it. Her name is Linda Gessner and she can she can flat frog fish. And she can she can bring up a frog on a frog when you know she, you think it's just craziness, huh? She's amazing. Wow. She's amazing with a frog. I'm telling you, she's she's awesome with a frog. Well, see, you can tell this is a fishing fishing podcast because how many opportunities in life do you get to say she's amazing with a frog? Yeah. I mean, you're either talking about a biologist or a bass fisher, right? Right. Uh, right? This this girl, she she can we, Kermit. I call it Kermit because she can <laughs> she can throw Kermit a mile and she can catch fish. That, that's amazing. That is fantastic. I heard one of the ladies say, "Oh, I've got a boat. I could come out here and fish pro." But here for the past few years, I've fished co, just so I can fish with a different different people a fascinating perspective that's the kind of thing that I, I find really interesting about you know the co-angling is that you you develop these um partnerships you know these friendships these mentorships these sort of a thing that you're going along the mentorship you can ask anybody now they're not going to tell you what baits to throw all right when you get on the boat with with a pro some of them are going to they're going to be a little sketchy until you get out on the water you know, because we after the meeting, we all meet with who we're going to partner up with. And some of them will say we're going to go fishing. And and some of them will say, well, you know, we're going to be in deep. We're going to be shallow. But I'll tell you this. Once you get out on the water, it's different. They they will share with you exactly how they're going to fish and what they're going to do. And they, you know, so they, they're kind of reticent in here, keep the little birds from, from getting a little yeah. too close. There you but go. One, once you're out there. Now, when you're out there, and is there times where they want to do A, but you're thinking maybe B would be a better option? Do you guys ever powwow, or do you ever exchange opinions on, on where we're going to fish or, wh or why? Well, like today, I, I fished with Ann Carroll, and uh, she's, she's a good angler, and she was like, look, if there's somewhere you want to stop, she said, just let me know. I've had several boaters uh, ask, you know, hey, if you see something that, that you want to throw at or you want to go, just let me know, and, you know. But nine times out of the ten, these pros have looked at maps. They have practiced and charted and know where they're going to go, where they're going to stop, what time of day they're going to stop. So it's pretty much charted out. But occasionally you'll have one that says, hey, 
you know, it's not working today. You got any ideas? And, yeah, you can you can give them a couple ideas, and they may take you up on it or they may not. Well, there you go. But uh, have you ever given advice and, and had it uh, had them thank you oh, at the yes. end of the day saying, wow, that was a good inspiration yes. going back into that pocket or, or up that creek? I mean, there's been times where um, – there's a there's a co angler here that she's my best friend pretty much. Her name is uh, Diana Eberhawk. And when I first met Diana Eberhawk, I asked her. I said, "What do you do for a living?" And she says, "Well, we raise turkeys." And I said, "So you're a turkey farmer?" She's like, "Well, yeah." So she gets on a boat as a co angler, and there have been times where the boater has started fishing like what she's what doing, she doing yeah. and she shares baits and we've had the we've had the boaters share baits with us so i mean it it does happen it does happen well i i also i get you know a sense of pride of shared pride when you're a co and then the boater does well or vice versa but of course the biggest thrill is when you both do really well well yeah because you're not fishing against the person in the front of the boat exactly so you know the boaters want the co-angler to do just as good as they as they do they want you to catch fish there's not anybody out there that fishes in the front of the boat in this tour that doesn't want their person in the back the co-angler not to catch fish well it sounds like such a great place to get started i've got a little friend uh, that i haven't met yet but that just young lady that was on the fish nerds podcast her name's rosie she's eight years old she's a fishing prodigy it's so great for her to have a whole different world than, than mm-hmm. say when Pam started fishing, when you started fishing, oh, yes. when I started fishing. She has tours and heroes and precedent and things you you know she can yeah. plan for, look look up to, uh, dream about, uh, and see girls and women you know out there doing this. So uh, one of the things that Angie talked about growing up is how you know the magazines, the media was pretty much devoid outside of a few notable people of, of ladies at all. Oh yeah, I and mean now you're thirty percent of the game. Yeah, I mean. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, you know, Pam Martin Wells, you know, f- she fished the Bassmaster Classic on Lay Lake. But before Pam Martin Wells, uh, Kim Bain Moore, she, uh, she's from Australia and she actually lives in Alabaster, Alabama. And her and her husband have uh, Reaction Innovations. She was one of the first ladies to ever fish the Bassmaster Classic elites. She what? qualified from the, uh, the WBT and then the next year, Pam Martin Wells came along she 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 did really well on lay lake she really did yeah that was her marshal oh and really yeah i got it yeah she 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 did really good really good on lay lake well that's just fantastic i mean the ceilings are being broke you know one after I, another take as much time as you want final word from cassie hall tell us what's on your mind or something you'd like to see or the future of women's fish i don't know just what's on well, your mind cassie i would love to see this tour continue like i said secret and cheryl have put their heart and soul in this tour for 13 years wow. and it would be awesome if somebody would come in and and help us out because if not bull shoals that that would be it and uh i may start tearing up because it it's tough. It would be. It is tough. You seems like you've been just involved, you know, clear up your neck in this. And, and uh, I would love to see it continue. I think, you know, it's just a matter of finding the, the right people right to, to get the sponsor support and to yeah. realize that this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity, not just for, you know, lure companies, but for clothing it companies. Is. for everything, you know, anything, all kinds of things. fishing industry, anything. I mean, it's. It's the way to get the word out. Just somebody come in and, and help us out a little bit. Because um, I sure hate to see it. I hate to see it end, especially for the younger generation. Yeah, they need a place to go. But I think because of people like you, no matter what betides with the LBAA, mm-hmm. I have a feeling the same motivational forces that cause these ladies to create this tour will cause, you know, motivate other women to pick up the torch and 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 carry on and i hope i hope someone does i really do because uh it's it's i i understand with secret and cheryl i do and uh i applaud them because i know it's hard for them to, to lay to, it aside yeah yes, it really, it, it really I'm sure is. It was a huge decision for them it was a hard decision for them to do that 
All righty. Well, thank you so much, Cassie. Everybody's kind of run out on us. Yeah, thank you for hanging is... around. I know it was a long, hot day out there. Oh, this has been great. Anytime that I can get and and talk fishing, I'm there. Anytime Angie wants me to talk fishing, I'll talk fishing all day long. Wow, we are cut from the same cloth. Yes, Just ask are. my yes, wife. Yes, yes <laughs> we are. Yes, we are. But I, I appreciate you letting me get on here and talk to you. And uh, if uh, anybody is ever out into Alabama... Uh, I'm I'm in Alabaster, Alabama. Come by and uh, stop in at Mark's Outdoors in Airport Marine and get you a boat. All right, all right. Well, I'm I'm going to Google Map Alabaster, Alabama right away. Just as soon as we're done. All yeah, right. Yeah. Look me up. We'll go fishing. Well, thank you, Cassie. Thank you for taking thank some you, time sir. to talk to the fish nerds. All right, and roll tide. Roll tide. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you. you Enjoyed bet. it.